Welcome to Lawyer's Coach. My name is Oliver Hansard, and each episode of this podcast will feature myself or Claire Rayson, both of us coaches and former lawyers, trying to find out what makes lawyers tick. We'll be hearing from various guests and experts, and then at the end of each episode, we will both be reflecting on what they said. In this episode, Claire Rayson talks to Eloise Skinner, author, podcaster, yoga teacher, and associate lawyer at a leading London firm. Claire starts by asking Eloise what inspired her to become a lawyer in the first place. So I think it's one of those things that becomes quite hard to remember why you initially chose it, because obviously it gets further and further away and you get further down the line of the career. And then there are sort of different things that you find along the path that interest you and kind of inspire you and make you want to keep going. But I think right at the beginning, it was probably a real passion for um, sort of uh, language, I guess, and the interpretation of language. So as a kid, I always really loved reading and writing and also this idea of like playing with a certain phrase or playing with words so that you could create a certain interpretation or win an argument or win a debate or something. So this real love of like working with language or my second art. Yeah, that was that was my initial sort of attraction to a career that used those kind of skills and law seemed to be a really good fit. And you mentioned there that other things along the way have also kind of sparked interest. What kind of things have, uh, through your journey have, have you found have kept you interested and kept you doing what you do? I think probably learning a little bit more about the different types of law. So obviously when you're younger and you're thinking, oh, I want to be a lawyer, you really have no idea apart from maybe what you've seen on TV of what a lawyer actually does. And so I think along the way it was a process of learning like what does a barrister do what does a solicitor do and then even when I decided that I wanted to become a solicitor I actually firstly thought I was going to go into family law and that really attracted me because of kind of the human element the emotional interaction with people and feeling like you're making a real difference in people's lives that kind of thing um, and then I ended up doing quite a lot of work experience in um, corporate law and that I think attracted me in different ways so that's kind of more like the challenge and the um, yeah the intellectual kind of nature of the work but also with this real commercial element like being integrated into the business world and just the really fast-paced nature of life in a corporate law firm so I think all of those elements yeah. And if life wasn't busy enough in a city firm, I know you're busy outside of that as well. And I was looking again at your CV before this call and you do podcasts, you're an author, you teach Pilates and yoga. Um, I, I mean, the question you must get asked all the time is how do you find the time to fit it all in? It was never my intention to be like, I'd like to never have any free time and just do all of these things. Um, but I think probably what happened is that I just had a really wide range of interests that I didn't want to let kind of um, fall, a, fall away like during the course of my legal career so far. Um, I think even at university I was doing most of these things so it's kind of more been like just carrying through interests that had already existed as part of my life and it's not like you know every day I do all of these things it's more like an accumulation of interests and passions that have grown over time. Um, but yeah, having said that, I did I do use like all of my vacation to like <laughs> do yoga trainings or like whatever. So yeah, there's a there's a certain element of like free time sacrifice. I know one of the things, and and it's it's where we we first connected that you're involved with is mindfulness in law. So I wonder if you can just tell me a bit about that. Yeah, so mindfulness, um, as probably most people know now, because it's become fairly mainstream um, in like the popular media and people wanting to talk about it and think about it recently, um, is sometimes described as like a form of meditation or a certain type of kind of mental discipline or practice that you can engage in. And it's essentially the art of becoming more present, so focusing on the present moment um, without judgment, you know, just becoming fully aware of what's going on in the present. And it's a really powerful practice because it's quite simple and it's very easy to integrate into your daily life. Like you can do it sort of just um, even walking around or you can do like mindful movement or you can have a seated meditation. So there's lots of different ways that you can sort of use mindfulness. And um, I think the reason it attracts me personally and probably the reason it, it attracts a lot of lawyers 
is because um, we tend to have very busy, overloaded minds. And I think the working environment that we're all subject to um, encourages a real kind of like hyperactivity of the mind. So we're always thinking, always planning, always like trying to really work into the um, detail of whatever we're doing. And I think while all those skills are so helpful and so valuable, there's also a need for a counterbalance, which is just, you know, this calmness of mind, this real presence and discipline of just being fully here in the present moment. I practice mindfulness as well. And I think one of the things that lots of people think when they when they hear mindfulness and they hear meditation is that it's about clearing the mind. Um, and as you mentioned there, I think lawyers and, you know, people that are busy have have busy minds and busy lives and and the thought of kind of emptying your head is something that seems alien to them but that actually actually isn't what mindfulness is about did you want to kind of explain a little bit more um, how you describe it to people the intention is really just to become present with all of those things in your mind who are still there they don't have to be you don't have to forcibly remove them it's more just like an observation or an awareness of what is already going on within your mind. So sometimes when I teach this, I teach it as, um, you know, you can use different sort of imagery to help people um, focus on this idea. But um, one of the ideas is that thoughts are just kind of passing by, like skimming through your mind, maybe like clouds passing over a sky, <laughs> um, and then moving quickly or slowly or whatever you're, you're feeling or thinking on that particular day. Um, but there's no real need to engage with the thoughts as they pass through your mind. So instead of like trying to grab onto them or cling to them or analyze them or overthink about them, you're observing them. You're just letting them be there, um, but you're not needing to do anything with them. And I think it's that it's that kind of skill and that that discipline that is kind of at the heart of this present moment awareness. And I know with the mindfulness in law group, um, you know, one of the ideas, the ideas behind it is to to get lawyers together so that they can practice mindfulness um, together. Um, how long have you been involved in that, and and what's the reception been with with lawyers? You know, perhaps haven't come across mindfulness before, and and you know, how do they receive it? So the reception has been incredibly positive. The content of the group is pretty much responsive to what people uh, want, so what people ask for. But we've had all sorts of things like. Um, we've had things to do with mindfulness and the body, so like mindful movement. Um, we've had very practical sessions which focus on integrating mindfulness into the course of a, of a working day for lawyers. Um, and most recently we had one on Zoom, um, which was great. It was like a Q&A session, so we had a lot of people come and sort of ask questions. And yeah, I think the idea of the group is just to be, just to serve like whatever um, lawyers really need or want from the practice of mindfulness so it's fairly um, flexible in that way but it's been a great initiative so far. And I think you know well-being is obviously something that has you know gathered pace and I think there's always lots of discussions around how you know work-life balance and, and well-being generally how that sits with you know in particular city firms where you know there are lots of client demands where you're working globally so you've got the the time zone issue as well do you think firms are, are taking it seriously do you think firms are getting better at, at getting that balance in yeah I think it's it's really um it's really difficult to say because I think when you're in the midst of a change which obviously we are in a very very real sense right now with kind of um social distancing and those kind of measures that are going to last in a long time into the future um i think it's very difficult to see with clarity what's actually happening i think it's only when you look back that you think actually there was a huge you know shift there and lots of things did change and speaking to senior lawyers now when they say you know the power of technology or enabling people to work from home is revolutionary for the work-life balance in some respects the junior lawyers working day previously would have been so much more like you know based in the office reviewing documents by hand and maybe not having the freedom or flexibility to kind of balance your life um, and pursue other interests as well and maybe even I know some people are crafting these these kind of portfolio careers where they do other things as well as um, their legal jobs um, so I think you know the, with the advent of things like technology and a general shift in sort of public consciousness towards a more balanced or um a more balanced career or or an emphasis on well-being i think things are changing but yeah it's difficult to see when you're in it 
And we've we've mentioned kind of the the concept of failure and and success and you know again it's one of the things that I want to explore with the guests this series in terms of what does success look like to you and with everything that you've done you know what's been your biggest achievement and and what thoughts do you have on success as a concept as you've kind of moved through your career? I didn't know that any of my kind of conventional like successes sort of the, the things I did with my law degree or you know the job that I have now or writing the book or whatever that none of those have really felt um I mean I felt very like proud of myself for working so hard to achieve them for sure but I think for me success is more when you feel like you're doing something that is really aligned with you know who you are and and what you're supposed to be doing in the world you know your, your greater sense of purpose if you have one um, and that's when I felt the most successful. So examples of that would be like, you know, when I do my own podcast, for example, or I put that out there and I get feedback from people saying it's really helped them or I can do a talk and really engage with people on a one to one level um, and then have people's feedback afterwards and really see how the work that I'm doing is actually, you know, helping or it's beneficial to other people in some way. As um, so sort of people who have come through a very structured educational system, as most lawyers have come up through like a fairly traditional career path so far, you know, like degree and then LPC or GDL and then training, training contract and becoming a junior lawyer. I think all of those things are there, you know, if you achieve them, they're incredible successes, but they're also slightly determined by other people's ideas of success. And for me, I've always felt most personally successful when I feel like what I'm doing really aligns with who I am and kind of my greater purpose. And do you think that kind of idea of conventional success or, you know, as you say, there are certain things when you from the outside, you look at someone, you can kind of identify things and say, yes, that person's successful because of, of X, Y and Z. Do you think that kind of holds some lawyers back? Yeah, I mean, I think it it will be different for everyone's experience will be totally different. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it could be it could be restrictive for some people because I think there's a fairly clear view of what you're supposed to be doing. And then I, I feel like if you you know if you feel like you don't want to go that path or you feel like you don't measure up to those markers of success that everyone else has kind of set in place for you or maybe even worse if you if you excel at the conventional sort of success route but then you feel unfulfilled on a personal level I think it can create a degree of conflict because and this has been my experience in in some respects of you know achieving all the things that people say that you should do and yet feeling like you know you haven't really achieved a degree of personal success like that that has kind of been my experience in certain in certain circumstances so, yeah, I think it can be quite difficult to sort of use the markers of society's success as your own personal um, mission in life. So when you're talking to junior lawyers, do you find that they have a similar conventional idea of success or do you think that they're looking for other things? Yeah, I think there's definitely a shift um, and I can see that in junior lawyers now, even compared to sort of when I was training um, or when I was at university studying law, I think now people have a greater sense of, you know, doing something that really fulfills them on a personal level. Um, I think people are um, driven to find a passion in what they do. And I think a lot of people are prioritizing that now over and above, you know, other, other factors. Um, and a lot of like law students now are also responding to things like um, using social media to create their own personal brands and kind of using like blogs and their own initiatives, sometimes even like starting their own sort of organizations or um, voluntary sort of uh, yeah, initiatives or charitable things um, in order to differentiate themselves or in order to feel more fulfilled or, or more distinctive as a junior lawyer. So I think it's kind of cool. Um, a lot of junior lawyers now seem to be, they, they seem to be bringing a bit more of their own personal uh, passions and their personalities to their legal careers which I think will obviously when that when they become the partners of the future will change the nature of law as a whole. Do you think that um, the current partners of today who perhaps are quite you know unused to blogging or unused to creating um, personal brands of course there will be exceptions do you think that they're embracing that what do you think that they're thinking when they look at the junior lawyers? Yeah I think 
obviously every law firm and every every partner um is different i think there is more of a move to start to embrace that and firms as a whole you can see are sort of engaging on on that more um personal level starting to sort of appeal to younger lawyers or or the new generation of lawyers coming up on that more um personable or passion focused level law is a very traditional industry and things take a long time to <laughs> changes kind of take a long time to work their way up but even things like um you know mindfulness or well-being i think a lot of law firms are now really appreciating that um, in particular as kind of a priority and i mean that works in both ways because the more a law firm can engage its employees and also you know all the way down to its junior lawyers as well as its senior lawyers the more profitable or successful that law firm is going to be so there's sort of is a business initiative behind it as well and if you were to give one piece of advice to to partners looking at you know at the people coming up and looking at well-being what would your one piece of advice be the important thing is going to be and and this has definitely been the case with people i've worked with and and also in my own career the most important thing is um, making sure that those people stay passionate about the work that they're doing because i think from this sense of kind of passion or like meaning in the work that you're doing comes everything else you know then there's an initiative to really try your best and succeed your hardest and also to take care of yourself on a personal level and make sure you're living a balanced and meaningful life so i would say one of the most important things will be to really figure out why people are there and what they want to get out of it and then to encourage them to see their own career as an opportunity for personal growth and development and not just something they're doing because you know it's a stable traditional career or you know they just felt like they had to because they went to law school but actually something they can take ownership of and something that will ultimately you know make them into a better lawyer um and yeah give them skills for the future and and a last question because you mentioned personal growth there and i can't i can't imagine what what's next for you but that's going to be my my question what's next it's hard to say i think the the last few months have given everyone an opportunity to really to really reflect and think about what they want to do next and there are lots of different things i'm interested in um and i think i really over the last few months come come to the realization or a greater appreciation of um you know my real passions being helping people and working with people and sort of giving back in some way so i think whatever i do next there'll be a certain sort of um yeah like social mobility focus or maybe something with um focusing on um diversity within the legal profession or something that's a little bit more focused on um giving something back it has been so lovely talking to you eloise and um it's just it's just incredible when you look at all the things that you do and and how you fit it all in and I, I'm so pleased that you gave um some time to me today because I, I it's just been really really interesting hearing from you oh, thank you so much for having me Claire Eloise was really keen to emphasize the importance of authenticity in her legal career did you feel that came out too yeah I think the lovely thing with with Eloise is you know I think she's really switched on with what success is and what happiness is I guess and it was you know lovely to hear her say that success really isn't what someone else defines for you um, it's when you're authentic and when you're true to your values and you know you and I you know have talked about this lots in the past in the context of coaching and it's lovely when you you work with coaches around values and about you know helping people find their compass she's really aware of what her compass is and she stays true to herself um and and you can just see the the balance and the calm and the happiness that comes from that it's quite impressive how she's been able to combine her legal career and yet keep true to herself and advocate important activities like mindfulness yeah and it's interesting so she's involved in mindfulness in law group and i think the legal industry should embrace mindfulness more than it does and it's it's really encouraging to have people like eloise who are championing mindfulness as a way of providing some some calm and some reflection in in what is otherwise a very busy and stressful career and maybe what we need to take out of that is that in some respects, she's an exception in that, and that needs to become more of the, the norm for the general health of the legal industry. Yeah, I think so. 
So thanks ever so much for that, Claire. And thanks to you for listening to the latest episode of The Lawyer's Coach. Lawyer's Coach is brought to you by Client Talk and Hansard Coaching. If you're enjoying this series, please rate us on your podcast provider so that others can find us. If you're a lawyer and would like to take part in Lawyer's Coach, please visit our website, lawyercoach.co.uk, for further details. And you can also join the conversation on our LinkedIn group, Lawyer's Coach. If there are any topics you'd like to hear us discuss, then just get in touch.